Good day to all participants, and welcome to this batch of the training program on building resilience of local government units for the new normal, embracing COVID-19 contact tracing work. Welcome to Module 1, Overview of National Health Emergency Response Situating Contact Tracing Work. This module will present briefly the Philippine government's strategy in responding to the COVID-19 pandemic. It will also allow our LGUs to reflect on how contact tracing work can best support the intentions of the COVID-19 strategic response. For this course's first lesson, I'm going to talk about situating contact tracing work in local governance, roles, and competencies of the contact tracing team. By the end of the session, you're expected to be able to describe the government's multi-sectoral response to the COVID-19 and how contact tracing is situated and define the legal basis for localized contact tracing action. Second, identify the critical role of LGUs in containing the spread of COVID-19 through contact tracing. Before we formally begin, let me just give you a glimpse of what we will be discussing today. First, we will discuss the government's overall strategic response to COVID-19, the strategic directions for the new normal, and its guiding principles. Second, we will take on a closer look on our government's tactical strategy, the end-to-end -end T3 management system, or simply test, trace, treat. Lastly, we will look into one of our government's key strategy towards breaking the chains of transmission of the COVID-19 virus. Contact tracing and look into your roles as contact tracers and orient you of some, if not all, basic knowledge and skills that you must possess in order to effectively deliver your roles as a contact tracer of your respective LGUs. But before we proceed, let's be reminded that whatever it is that we will be imparting to you in this training program, all are subject to change. As we come to understand the virus, policies, strategies will eventually be updated in order for us to be better respond and cope to the situation. To give you a brief background on the national strategic response to COVID-19, on January 30, 2020, the first confirmed case of the coronavirus 2019 was announced in the Philippines with a 38-year-old female from Wuhan testing positive for the novel coronavirus. On the same day, the World Health Organization declared the COVID-19 as a global public health emergency of international concern, or PHEIC. This declaration was a call to action for all countries to prepare for containment, which includes active surveillance, early detection, isolation, case management, and contact tracing to prevent further spread of the virus. The Philippine government, on the other hand, mounted a multi-sectoral response to COVID-19 through the Interagency Task Force on Emerging Infectious Disease chaired by the Department of Health. By March 11, 2020, the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a pandemic. On March 24, 2020, the President announced the creation of a National Task Force for COVID-19, adopting a whole-of-government approach in addressing it. The task force is primarily responsible to implement the National Action Plan on COVID-19, which contains the government's overall strategy to contain its spread and mitigate its socio-economic impacts. The Philippine government, however, assures the Filipino people that a national strategy in solving the COVID-19 crisis is in place to make everyone's lives as comfortable as possible. To deepen our understanding of this plan, please watch this video. It was in December 2019 when an outbreak which originated from Wuhan, China, took over the headlines. The disease caused by this new strain of coronavirus has been officially called by the World Health Organization as COVID-19. January 30, 2020. The Philippine Department of Health reported the first case of COVID-19 in the country. And just this March 7, the first local transmission of COVID-19 was confirmed. To further prevent the spread of the virus, the Philippine government came up with a national strategy against the COVID-19 pandemic the DITR Operational Methodology. DITR stands for the four phases of the operational methodology. 
detect, isolate, treat, and reintegrate. The detection phase involves the conduct of contact tracing. Detect the carriers and potential carriers, implementation of the ECQ, and the preparation of isolation and treatment facilities. The second phase is the isolation of carriers that involves the relocation of COVID-19 to designated treatment and isolation facilities as well as the gradual downgrading of ECQ to home quarantine or HQ. The third phase is the treatment phase that involves the treatment and rehabilitation of COVID-19 and their eventual reintegration into the community as well as the patients under suspect and probable cases. The last phase is the reintegration of healing patients that marks the recovery phase and the end of crisis. Once the strategy is nicely done and followed, a gradual normalization will be implemented with preventative measures. There is also a possibility that there will be an extension of quarantine in other remaining affected areas. To keep everyone informed during the course of the implementation of the national strategy, the DOH and the Presidential Communications Operations Office, together with local government units, work hand-in-hand -hand to disseminate information all throughout the country. Communication efforts include regular talk to the nation of President Rodrigo Roa Duterte, daily press and public briefings of the cabinet members, constant curation and updating of the official government portal, www.covid19.gov.ph. Meanwhile, the Philippine government assures everyone that plans are in place to make our lives as comfortable as possible. Funds are allocated to ensure everyone's welfare. Food supply is sufficient and supply chain remains unhampered. All government resources are utilized to support the fight against COVID-19. Measures are in place to mitigate social and economic impact caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Hospitals and pharmacies, groceries, wet markets, banks, water and electricity, internet, telcos and other essential services continue to operate. Nurses, doctors, police officers and the armed forces, barangay officials and other frontliners are equipped with protective gear. Contact tracing is intensified by using all platforms such as mobile applications, hotlines and barangay centers. There is no cure yet. Thus, we are facing a new norm that focuses on social distancing, proper hygiene etiquette, and the discipline to be part of the solution to mitigate the effects of this global pandemic. The government's action plan is anchored on a whole of nation and a whole of community approach. This means everyone from all walks of life, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao is part of this fight. We dig deeper into our Filipino values of resilience and faith to hope for the best, of strength and compassion to prepare for the worst, that together, as one nation, we heal as one. Thank you for that. As part of its response, our government has also set forth its strategic directions in our fight against COVID-19, part of which is establishing a set of principles, general rules, to guide our decision makers in these turbulent times. Whole of government, whole of system, whole of society approach shall be espoused in this flight, meaning all public service agencies, communities, and all stakeholders will work together and win the fight against the coronavirus. Science shall inform decision-making at the institutional and individual level, meaning the use of scientific methods and their results should be used in making decisions. With limited resources, response shall be guided by fair and transparent priority setting. In the event of any conflict of rules or guidelines, human dignity and safety and needs of the individual shall prevail. The overall strategic direction for new normal provides that our efforts against COVID-19 shall be national government enabled, national government to provide the direction and legitimacy, local government unit led. These local actions are expected and it must be people-centered COVID-19 response. Always the subject is the individual and the people.
If such is the case, we would see the complementing roles of the national government and local government units in this. Having understood that our strategic direction for the new normal must be national government enabled, local government unit led and people centered, we must also be aware of the surrounding policies that legitimizes our response for COVID-19. And on top of these policies lies the supreme law of the land, the Constitution. The Constitution carries the fundamental principles as to how our nation shall be governed and from which our policies emanate. As all of you may have already noticed, a particular state policy has been repeatedly invoked in our fight against COVID-19. The Article 2, Section 15, which provides the state shall protect and promote the right to health of the people and instill health consciousness among them. Second in our hierarchy of laws are the national policies, a prominent piece of legislation that our local officials and functionaries can refer to as the Local Government Code. Section 16 of the Code, the General Welfare Clause, is an all-purpose clause which provides the LGUs the power to exercise acts that will benefit their constituency. Next in line are the administrative issuances by government agencies to implement and or support national laws that are enacted by Congress and even to implement directives from the President. At the very base of this hierarchy lies the ordinances enacted by LGUs to support policies at the national level and conformance to the policies set forth by the national government is a must. Looking at the overall picture of our response against COVID-19, certain roles and responsibilities must not only be performed, but also be clear, so that we fully understand and better situate ourselves. For its end, the national government is expected to assess the landscape, develop national plans, policies and strategies, set safety and efficacy standards, build capacity of institutions, measure and monitor progress, and lastly, evaluate effectiveness of our actions. On the other hand, local government units are expected to be stewards of local health systems, primary responders to the public health emergency, and lastly, implement calibrated and people-centered response to include primary to tertiary care in an integrated and coordinated manner. Translating these roles into accountabilities, we see national government as being accountable for 1. The development of strategies and their enforcement 2. Development of guidelines and standards 3. Rollout plans and 4. Monitoring operations and impact of nations Local government units, on the other hand, are accountable for 1 the implementation of plans considering their alignment to nationally prescribed guidelines and standards, and two, public health service delivery. Presently, LGUs are guided by this strategy. As we ease the restrictions and step into the new normal, the government advances now this tactical response strategy called end-to-end -end T3 management system, or trace, test, and treat. So what is T3 strategy? Each of its component is multifaceted, which means can be looked at different perspectives and complementary to each other. T3 is the most promising approach in bringing and keeping the pandemic under control without having the need to resort to widespread lockdowns of social and economic life. Note also what experts from the University of the Philippines warns about conducting mass testing without effective contact tracing. The results of which may only be to the detriment of our present efforts and will only stem possible new infections, especially as the government loosens its imposed restrictions and quarantine measures. They have also reported that for now, contact tracing is the weakest link in the country's response measures. Thus underscoring the need to hire and train more personnel to perform said function. In the context of COVID-19, T3 involves testing, which is the use of diagnostic tests for identifying the infection of COVID-19 in a person. Tracing, which is identifying where infected people are in order to provide the most appropriate management of the case and to prevent further spreading the virus. 
It deals further with locating all the people that were in close contact with a person confirmed with COVID-19. Treating, which involves that these contacts should ideally be placed in quarantine for at least 14 days, either in their homes or in a specific facility. This will also include follow-up of the contacts to monitor for symptoms and signs of infection and testing them to check for disease infection. In support to T3, the Department of the Interior and Local Government or DILG directed its field officers, the LGOOs, LGUs, the Philippine National Police, and the Bureau of Fire Protection to lend their manpower to the Department of Health or DOH in contact tracing of possible COVID-19 infections. The AILG Secretary Eduardo M. Año was also swift in ordering LGUs to increase the number of their trained contact tracing teams that will identify and monitor persons who are suspected of contracting the disease. And as a move, the ALG and DOH collaborated and issued LGU guidelines and protocols to support T3, particularly contact tracing. Moreover, the department has also been on the move to assist you in your role as contact tracers. Presently, DILG has been facilitating the hiring of contact tracers in support to the government's initiative to curb the spread of infection amongst Filipinos. There are issuances also coming up from the department to reinforce contact tracing work. The monitoring and reporting of cases has also been organized by the department through the good office of our Undersecretary for Peace and Order, Yusek Bernardo C. Floresa Jr., with the adoption of the revised Harmonized Contact Tracing Report to support our LCEs in making sound and informed decisions, which will be discussed to you in detail in the succeeding sessions. To give support to contact tracing, the local governments, as the frontliners of their respective communities, are expected to take on a greater role against COVID-19 pandemic. The LGUs take on the responsibility of establishing and activating their respective local task force against COVID-19 and align their actions with the National Strategy Framework on COVID-19 Response. LGUs also carry the responsibility to establish governance structure and health management systems and contact tracing. For COVID-19 response, the LGU Health System Establishment covers facilities and competencies to detect, test, isolate, and treat every case and trace every contact. So what is contact tracing? Contact tracing is identified to be an important component in containing outbreaks of infectious disease and mitigating the further spread of the virus. DOH Department Memorandum 2020-0189 dated April 17 of this year, defines contact tracing as the identification, listing, and follow-up of persons who may have into contact with a confirmed COVID-19 case. What are the goals of contact tracing? Department of Health Memorandum Number 2020-0189 provides, again, for the goals of contact tracing as follows. To interrupt ongoing transmission and reduce the spread of infection, to alert close contacts to the possibility of infection and other preventive counseling, and to understand the epidemiology of a disease in a particular population. With reference to the DOH and the ILG guidelines, the contact tracer's functions and basic knowledge and skill set requirements are the Provincial, City, Municipal Epidemiology and Surveillance Unit are tasked for case investigation and collection of data fields which include drafting investigation plans, conduct of investigation by interviewing clients with COVID-19, collection of specimen, monitor the clients for COVID-19 symptoms, and connect clients to resources to support self-isolation. While for city municipal contact tracing teams, they are to assume an important role in tracing, monitoring, and recording of cases. The performance of which entails that they must draft contact tracing plans, secure a list of confirmed COVID-19 cases from the Provincial, City, Municipal Epidemiology and Surveillance Unit, locate and notify contacts of their potential exposure, refer them to testing, 
and connect contacts to resources to support self-quarantine in areas with community transmission. In the monitoring of close contacts under quarantine, the team must first closely monitor the case or contacts under quarantine, and secondly, submit information gathered during case investigations and contact tracing. The Barangay Health Emergency Response Team, or BEHERT, shall assist in recording and monitoring these contacts on their development or progression of signs and symptoms of the disease. Going further, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, a U.S.-based organization, noted that successful case investigation and contact tracing for COVID-19 is dependent on a robust and well-trained workforce. Well, we are one with them in saying that contact tracing is a specialized competency requiring basic knowledge on key medical concepts and skills on sensitive and interpersonal interviewing, among others. Following their role, here are some of the required knowledge and skills set of a contact tracer. 1. Foundational knowledge. Sufficient understanding on the basic scientific and medical terms on COVID-19, its incubation and infectious period, transmission, symptoms, and prevention. Definition of a case and contact including the associated exposure, pre-symptomatic and asymptomatic infection, their signs and symptoms, and sufficient understanding on infection prevention and control to include social distancing, quarantine and isolation, testing and treatment. Functional knowledge on passive and active contact tracing. First, the goals and approaches of contact investigation. Contact tracing of COVID-19 case and contacts in the community and case reporting. Core legal policies and protocols. Associated roles and responsibilities of various levels of government, so as the basis in the COVID-19 contact tracing program. And lastly, patient confidentiality, including the ability to conduct interviews without violating confidentiality. Ability to think critically, solve problems, and demonstrate sound judgment in dealing with issues and concerns of diverse individuals during a time of crisis and distress. Apply the techniques of motivational interviewing skills, such as using open-ended questions, active listening, and emphatic conversation. Ensuring polite, efficient, and appropriate use of communication at all times and providing accurate information on appropriate support needed. The timely and accurate recording of the information from case or contact interviews and ability to handle confidential information with discretion in pursuant to Data Privacy Act of 2012. The ability also to show empathy and be able to modify and adapt motivational techniques and interviewing tools for the differing needs of case and contacts, especially in stress and difficult situations, is a desirable competency that a contact tracer must possess. In addition to this knowledge and skill set mentioned, there are valuable actions that can also influence advancement of your contact tracing work. Contact tracing should be seen as a positive action and will need much preparation. And that contact tracing can only succeed if people accept it as an effective measure and, on an individual level, participate when appropriate. LGU shall also need to be mindful of some opportunities and support to further their health governance response options. You can look at the following avenues to augment your contact tracing efforts. For LGU good practices, you may get in touch with DILG and Local Government Academy and your local governance regional resource centers situated in the different DILG regional offices. Make use of the LGU versus COVID-19 PH platform by the DILG and the Asia Foundation. Look at LGUs with good practices and COVID-19, such as the experience of Baguio City under the leadership of our recently appointed contact tracing czar, Honorable Benjamin Magalong, and see opportunities to replicate. For financial resources, you may anticipate the increase in the Internal Revenue Allotment, or ERA, in light of the Mandanas Petition, wherein the government is currently crafting the transition plan for its implementation. Upon rollout, LGUs will have greater access to funds for devolved services. 
for better pandemic preparedness and response, the local disaster risk reduction and management plans must also be amended to include public health emergencies, wherein not less than 5% of the estimated revenue from regular sources can be set aside to support DRM activities. For creating networks, you may connect with health networks, academe, and the leagues of local government units for technical guidance. For capacity development, you can always get in touch with us here at Local Government Academy, our partner, the Philippine Public Safety College, the Department of Health, and other national government agencies. At the end of the day, our efforts for contact tracing can only succeed if people accept it as an effective measure. Hence, for us to sustain our efforts, a clear communication strategy must be in place in order to secure our gains in the fight against COVID-19. First and foremost, support contact tracing as a function. A function that must be supported from all aspects of capacity, including structure, your competencies as contact tracers, and likewise, the presence of policies and guidelines. Next is to engage. As contact tracers, you must be able to engage and involve all sectors for contact tracing to be successful. Crucial to this is getting the support of community leaders who can facilitate the promotion of contact tracing and getting public buy-in. To communicate is likewise an effective strategy and actually the number one skill needed for an effective contact tracing. We must maximize all available avenues for communication to widespread belief and establish a social normal that contact tracing is a crucial strategy in protecting our health and communities. It is by communicating our strategy well that we can gain the public's trust and their participation. Moreover, it is also important for our stakeholders to understand and appreciate the process behind contact tracing, its principles, and purpose. Another important effort for us to sustain our gains for contact tracing is to observe and practice respect. In your role as a contract tracer, you will be able to meet and talk with different people possessing varying backgrounds. It is your duty as a contact tracer to respect whatever differences you may have with your respondents, most especially place high regard for confidentiality. And lastly, evaluate. Assess the progress of the process. See what's working and what is not in order to improve on the process and other variables behind contact tracing. Overall, these efforts would help us gain the public support and sustain our efforts for contact tracing. That ends Module, module one. 1. We hope we were able to give you a starting grasp of the government's multi-sectoral response to COVID-19. How contact tracing is situated in local government operations and the critical roles of local governmental units in containing the spread of COVID-19 through contact tracing. Thank you.